Hey guys, so today I have a video that is a little different. Um, I wasn't really planning to film this, it was just something that caught my attention and it prompted me to have a discussion with you guys because really my favorite videos are ones that really hopefully kind of hit somewhere for you guys and make you think and make you want to comment back and forth with each other um, and share your own opinions and your own ideas and those are just the types of videos that I really enjoy producing and that I really get fulfillment out of. I went to the store today and I was going through the magazine aisle I came across the Cosmo this is the March 2014 edition with Ashley Benson on the cover um, she looks beautiful her hair is a little bit darker it's a little bit shorter I just think she looks so cute and I really like her um, but the main thing that I wanted to talk about is not her actually it is an article I found in here and it just really struck something in me and made me kind of want to bring up this topic and get some feedback from you guys in the comments on what you think about it um, for everyone that doesn't really like these discussion type lifestyle videos, don't worry, there will be a video um, about beauty up probably tomorrow, so if that is more your thing, then just go ahead and wait for that, but I'm going to go ahead and get on into the article that I wanted to discuss with you guys today. So this is the article that really caught my attention, and basically this is the author of the article right here. Her name is Charlotte, and she is a recent graduate of Harvard, and she basically talks about what she thinks is kind of wrong in the dating world in college, and just in general how dating has changed. So basically the author meets a boy at Harvard, and his name is Nate. And he says, hey Charlotte, maybe we can cross paths tomorrow night, I'll text you. And she basically thinks his kind of avoidance of an actual date is because he's nervous or he doesn't really know what to do. Um, and this also says, maybe he was also just trying to avoid feeling insecure about showing interest in me. And after all, we are millenniums away from old-fashioned courtship and that no longer exists. She armed herself with a simple, just let me know what's up and at some point we could grab dinner. She said that she wanted to hang out with him, but she wanted to feel vague because he was, and he nodded and she figured it was kind of a date. And then it goes on to say that he never called or texted her, and she called him at 11 p.m., and he didn't answer, so she texted him and said, what's up, but with no question mark because she didn't want to seem too desperate. It's so weird how we've gotten to the point that like text message really can like convey that much emotion even though it's so simple um, maybe you guys agree with me on that or maybe you don't but I think that's just really funny that she mentioned that um, in this article and then she said the next morning she decided to text Nate one more time acknowledging their failed plan she said bummer about last night maybe another time and he never answered so she saw him in class and he glanced over and he would look away whenever they made eye contact in March she saw him at a party he was drunk and apologized for hurting her feelings and she responded with, it's fine, I was just more confused as to why you got weird. And it says, but Nate didn't, ex didn't acknowledge his weirdness. Instead, he said that he thought I was really attractive and bright, but he hadn't been interested in dating me at all. And then the author says, wait, who said anything about dating, I thought to myself. I was super annoyed, and I simply wanted to hang out with him. Although I didn't have the energy to tell Nate that I was sick of this and many other guys' assumptions that women spend their days plotting the ways down to pin a man and that ignoring me wasn't the kindest way to tell me that he didn't want to lead me on. So to avoid seeming too emotional or crazy, I decided to follow his immature lead and walk away to get a beer. And so long, Nate, that was it. She finishes it off with saying, This sums up the pattern I have experienced and observed and heard about from almost all of my college girlfriends. The culture of campus dating is broken, or at least broken-ish, and it's time we figure out why our generation is so frightened of letting ourselves be emotionally available. So basically, she said um, she was going to hang out with this guy. She didn't. And then she questioned him about it, and he just basically said, Oh, well, I didn't want to actually date you, so that's why we never went out. Um, and I think that's kind of funny. I've definitely seen um, friends of mine say that they don't want to respond to a guy too quickly or they don't want to um, seem too interested because they don't want him to kind of get freaked out and back away because they think that they want to date. And I just think it's really, I don't know, it's kind of sad that we've gotten to that point, I guess. I've had guys like go out with me and then say, just so you know, I don't want a girlfriend and like I never even asked if he did and I probably wouldn't even have wanted to be his girlfriend. But um, it's just interesting that what she said was really... A similar thing that I also have witnessed but the part of the article that really struck me um, was right over here and it's titled whoever cares less wins and this is kind of something I want to explore a little bit more and get more feedback on because I think it's really interesting and honestly kind of messed up and a little immature 
Um, but first, right here, it says, when the person you hooked up with last night walks toward you in the dining hall, you try to not look excited, and you maybe even look away. And um, the author moves on to say that when Nate hurt her, she wanted to um, tell him that she was annoyed, or that she even was kind of upset that he ditched her, and that he then blamed it on not wanting a girlfriend. But instead, she said um, she decided to just ignore him, knowing that whoever acts like they care less wins. So that's really interesting. Interesting. Um, I've definitely, like I said, had people say that you don't want to act too excited or too interested because that will scare the other person off and it's better to kind of act like you care less because playing hard to get is a better way to go about trying to win someone's attention or win their affection. Personally, I think if someone it, like plays hard to get with me, I just take it as they're not interested and I pretty much move on and kind of go pursue another person. So for me, that really doesn't work, but I know a lot of people really do think the way to act is to act kind of uninterested and whether that's in a way to protect themselves or to just come off as, you know, a little bit more mysterious and not as, um, I guess, obvious about their feelings. I think ultimately it kind of just wastes your time and it probably kind of wastes the other person's time because if they're anything like me, they probably will then just end up uninterested. I think it's really, really attractive and really um, stands out when someone is able to express their feelings and not do it in like a creepy and kind of like overbearing way, but just when someone is able to say, you know, I'm, I really enjoy getting to know you, I really like you, I think you're a cool person. To me, that means so much more than someone like ignoring my text messages and purposely trying to hold back and purposely trying to write in the most kind of calm and vague way possible. I just think it's kind of stupid and personally I don't like it and it doesn't like make me want them more. It says that the great irony is that no one seems to enjoy playing the game Who Cares Less Wins. Between 2005 and 2011, New York University psychologist Paula England conducted an online survey in which she compiled data from more than 20,000 students at 21 colleges throughout the United States. Her data showed that 61% of men hoped a hookup would turn into something more and 68% of women hoped for the same thing almost the same, although we're all trying so hard not to care that no one is benefiting. And again, this kind of just brings it back to if you do truly like someone, I think you honestly should act like it and I think you should act on it. Uh, number one, I think it will save you time in the long run because if the other person doesn't like you back, at least you'll figure it out and you can move on. Um, and also, I just think it's kind of, like I said, I think it's very attractive and very almost standout-ish now in a way because so many people want to hold back and seem um, guarded and just play hard to get that I think it really would make you stand out from the crowd. And it also, like I said, just seems very confident, like that you are confident in the way that you feel and the way that you want to act. And I'm going to end off this video with kind of the author's final thoughts. She says, We should be working to achieve the end of the whoever cares less wins game. Sure, caring less brings a sense of security, but by never making yourself vulnerable, you automatically are projected against rejection. And that type of security is nothing more than glorified loneliness. You're closing the doors to the kinds of experiences and emotions that arise from caring deeply about another person. Once we stop playing games and ditch the defense mechanism of apathy and quit communicating with emotions, emoticons will be much better off when it comes to dating. So ending off in the video, basically the author explains that when you do try to play hard to get and kind of hold in your feelings, um, you really are going to miss out on a lot of great people because they're probably not going to think you're interested and they probably are just going to pass you by and move on to the next person. And the biggest thing I can say is if you have been playing hard to get or that's kind of been your defense mechanism because you haven't wanted to get hurt, maybe try to be upfront and honest about how you feel and you might get a positive reaction and maybe it will change your ways on how you act and how you approach dating and feelings. So let me know in the comments what you guys think about this again, um, mainly if you have ever tried to play hard to get or tried to hold back if, even if you really did like someone and why you did that and if it worked out for you or if you have been really upfront and honest about your feelings and maybe you were rejected and if that has made you want to kind of be a little bit less upfront and a little bit more guarded. I would just love to hear any comments or thoughts on this subject. Again, I really just want to create a bunch of conversation and different ideas flowing in the comments. So definitely leave me some ideas. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you guys have a great night. Bye everyone!